try mentioning the government recommendation to a prostate cancer survivor. I've done it and I got a string of curse words as a response. But yes, the PSA test could save your life. And yes, the PSA test could lead to other procedures that are unnecessary that could leave you impotent or incontinent. So what should you do? Well, step one is to get informed. I think the younger a man is, the more likely he is to benefit from PSA testing. However, that man now has to also become a little more involved in this whole production and understand the risks he's assuming and the potential gains and losses he might get from acting on information. So let's get you up to speed on the PSA test. First off, it doesn't directly detect cancer. Rather, it measures the level of an enzyme called PSA. The male body tends to make more of it when something is wrong with the prostate. Most men are usually under, start undergoing annual testing at age 50, and that poses its own set of problems. That's because a lot of things can raise your PSA level, from the aggressive, deadly prostate cancers to prostate cancers that aren't so deadly and may not even require treatment, to problems that aren't even cancer, to things that aren't even problems. Uh, unfortunately, as men get older and start entering their 60s, their prostates enlarge for benign reasons. And unfortunately, that raises the PSA and leads to a lot of the false positives that are often associated with this test. In most men, the levels trend upward over the long term. But the short term is another story. There's a certain biological variation to, to repeated tests. Sometimes a PSA can bounce up and a month later the PSA can come right back down again. A delay of a month to repeat the test is, is nothing compared to the outcomes if we jump too rapidly. Granted, one really high reading may be all it takes to raise a red flag. But by the time a man reaches 70, a naturally high reading becomes only one of the factors that can really muddy the picture. The problem is an elevated PSA in someone 70 or 75, um, number one, could be elevated because of benign enlargement. Yeah. Uh, yet we can go ahead and do a biopsy and find a low-grade cancer that's not likely to kill you. And three, uh, we're not so sure that our interventions, specifically surgery and radiation, have a dramatic outcome in the time frame of 10 to 15 years. Here's what Dr. Albertson wants you to take home from all this. If you're over 50, the younger you are, the more prudent it is that you get your PSA tested. Also, don't go jumping to get a biopsy at the first sign of an elevated PSA. And most of all, now that you know, don't be afraid to talk with your doctor. I'm Tim Lammers, Fox, Connecticut.